equation of motion on a rotating sphere using Lagrangian mechanics. Unless you are a believer in flat Earth theory, you should know that Earth is very close to being a sphere, and that ordinary Euclidean geometry does not apply on its surface. This makes describing the equations of motion of an object on Earth's surface already very challenging. What makes the matter worse, however, is the fact that Earth itself is rotating. Therefore, we also need to describe the equation of motion of the object on Earth's surface with respect to a rotating frame. Now, as described in another video of mine, in Newtonian mechanics, we can derive the equation of motion in a rotating frame. Start fraction d vector v over dt, end fraction equals to start fraction delta vector v over delta t, end fraction plus vector omega cross vector v, where vector v is the velocity of the object relative to the rotating frame, and vector omega is the angular velocity of the rotating frame. However, since we need to constrain the motion of the object on the sphere, a constraining force must always be applied on the left-hand side of this equation, which we have to figure out when solving the equation. While it is possible to do that with Newtonian mechanics, there is another way of deriving the equation of motion that is more natural for dealing with constrained motion, like Rongjian mechanics. In this video, we will demonstrate how this can be done for motions on a rotating sphere. So let us start by considering a point object with unit mass. In the remaining parts of this video, we will use the following notations. Theta is the longitude of the sphere. Phi is the latitude of the sphere. Capital R is the radius of the sphere. Capital Omega is the angular velocity of the sphere. Capital T is the kinetic energy of the object. Capital M is the torque exerted on the object. Capital F is the force exerted on the object. And U is the velocity of the object with respect to the rotating sphere. Let us first find out what the velocity is. Since the sphere is rotating with angular velocity capital omega, its velocity component on the theta coordinate with respect to a rest frame, u start subscript theta start subscript zero and subscript and subscript, is capital R cosine start parenthesis pi and parenthesis capital omega. Its velocity component on the phi coordinate with respect to a rest frame is zero. Meanwhile, the velocity component on the theta coordinate of the object with respect to the rotating sphere, u start subscript theta and subscript is capital R cosine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis theta dot, and that on the phi coordinate, u start subscript phi and subscript is capital R phi dot. The kinetic energy of the object, capital T, would then be start fraction 1 over 2 end fraction times start parenthesis start parenthesis u start subscript theta and subscript plus u start subscript theta start subscript 0 and subscript and subscript and parenthesis squared plus Start parenthesis u start subscript phi and subscript and parenthesis squared and parenthesis, which is equal to start fraction 1 over 2 and fraction times start parenthesis capital R squared cosine squared start parenthesis phi and parenthesis start parenthesis theta dot plus capital omega and parenthesis squared plus capital R squared start parenthesis phi dot and parenthesis squared and parenthesis. Now in Lagrangian mechanics, we have the following equation of motions. Start fraction d over dt and fraction start square brackets start fraction partial capital T over partial theta dot and fraction and square brackets minus start fraction partial capital T over partial theta and fraction equals to 
capital M start subscript theta and subscript and start fraction d over dt and fraction start square brackets start fraction partial capital T over partial phi dot and fraction and square brackets minus start fraction partial capital T over partial phi and fraction equals to capital M start subscript phi and subscript. Let's find out what each term actually is. Since there is only one term in the kinetic energy that involves theta dot, start fraction partial capital T over partial theta dot and fraction equals to start fraction 1 over 2 and fraction times capital R squared cosine squared start parenthesis phi and parenthesis times start fraction partial over partial theta dot and fraction start square brackets start parenthesis theta dot plus capital omega and parenthesis squared and square brackets which equals to capital R squared cosine squared start parenthesis phi and parenthesis start parenthesis theta dot plus capital omega and parenthesis therefore for theta coordinate we have capital M start subscript theta and subscript equals to start fraction d over dt and fraction start square brackets capital R squared cosine squared start parenthesis phi and parenthesis start parenthesis theta dot plus capital omega and parenthesis and square brackets which equals to capital R squared start parenthesis cosine squared start parenthesis phi and parenthesis theta dot dot minus 2 sine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis cosine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis phi dot start parenthesis theta dot plus capital omega and parenthesis and parenthesis in the meantime there is only one term in the kinetic energy that involves phi dot so start fraction partial capital T over partial phi dot and fraction equals to start fraction 1 over 2 and fraction times capital R squared start fraction partial over partial phi dot and fraction start square brackets start parenthesis phi dot and parenthesis squared and square brackets which is just capital R squared pi dot there is however also a turn in kinetic energy that involves phi so start fraction partial capital T over partial phi and fraction equals to start fraction 1 over 2 and fraction times capital R squared start fraction partial over partial phi and fraction start square bracket cosine square start parenthesis phi and parenthesis and square bracket start parenthesis theta dot plus capital omega and parenthesis squared which is equal to minus capital R squared sine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis cosine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis start parenthesis theta dot plus capital omega and parenthesis squared therefore for the phi coordinate we have capital M start subscript phi and subscript equals to start fraction d over dt and fraction start square brackets capital R squared phi dot and square brackets minus start parenthesis minus capital R squared sine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis cosine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis start parenthesis theta dot plus capital omega and parenthesis squared and parenthesis which is capital R squared start parenthesis phi dot dot plus sine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis cosine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis start parenthesis theta dot plus capital omega and parenthesis squared and parenthesis so now we have the equation of motion in terms of torque angular velocity and angular acceleration of the object but an equation of motion in terms of force velocity and acceleration is usually more useful as we mentioned earlier 
the velocity component on the theta coordinate of the object with respect to the rotating sphere, u start subscript theta and subscript is capital R cosine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis theta dot, and that on the phi coordinate, u start subscript phi and subscript is capital R phi dot. If we take the time derivative of u start subscript theta and subscript, we get capital R start parenthesis cosine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis theta dot dot minus sine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis phi dot theta dot and parenthesis. Therefore, capital F start subscript theta and subscript, which is start fraction capital M start subscript theta and subscript over capital R cosine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis and fraction equals to u dot start subscript theta and subscript minus start parenthesis 2 capital omega sine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis plus start fraction tangent start parenthesis phi and parenthesis over capital R and fraction u start subscript theta and subscript and parenthesis u start subscript phi and subscript Similarly, taking the time derivative of u start subscript phi and subscript, we get capital R phi dot dot. So capital F start subscript phi and subscript, which is start fraction capital M start subscript phi and subscript over capital R and fraction equals to u dot start subscript phi and subscript plus start parenthesis 2 capital omega sine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis plus start fraction tangent start parenthesis phi and parenthesis over capital R and fraction u start subscript theta and subscript and parenthesis u start subscript theta and subscript plus capital R sine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis cosine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis capital omega squared. And this is the equation of motion we want. In the equation, we can see the Coriolis effect, which is minus start parenthesis 2 capital omega sine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis plus start fraction tangent start parenthesis phi and parenthesis over capital R and fraction u start subscript theta and subscript and parenthesis u start subscript phi and subscript for the theta coordinate and start parenthesis 2 capital omega sine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis plus start fraction tangent start parenthesis phi and parenthesis over capital R and fraction u start subscript theta and subscript and parenthesis u start subscript theta and subscript for the phi coordinate. We can also see the centrifugal effect, which is zero for the star coordinate, and capital R sine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis cosine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis capital omega squared for the phi coordinate. We now seek the equation of motion of not just a point object, but a continuous mass on a rotating sphere. The most important application of this form of equation of motion is in atmospheric dynamics, where we need to solve the Navier-Stokes equation of air mass across the globe. For simplicity, we will assume that frictional and elastic forces are negligible in the spatial-temporal scale we are interested in. This leaves us with only the pressure gradient force and the gravitational force in the equation. So vector capital F equals to minus start fraction gradient capital P over rho and fraction plus vector G, where capital P is the pressure field of the continuum. Rho is the density field of the continuum, and vector g is the gravitational field exerted on the continuum. Furthermore, let us assume that the gravitational force cancels out the centrifugal effect. Therefore, the continuum can be at rest relative to the rotating sphere when pressure gradient is absent. In such case, the equation of motion for the continuous mass will become u dot start subscript theta and subscript minus start parenthesis 2 capital omega sine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis plus 
start fraction tangent start parenthesis phi and parenthesis over capital R and fraction u start subscript theta and subscript and parenthesis u start subscript phi and subscript equals to minus start fraction 1 over rule capital R cosine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis and fraction start fraction partial p over partial theta and fraction for the theta coordinate and u dot start subscript pi n subscript plus start parenthesis 2 capital omega sine start parenthesis phi and parenthesis plus start fraction tangent start parenthesis phi and parenthesis over capital R and fraction u start subscript theta and subscript and parenthesis u start subscript theta and subscript equals to minus start fraction 1 over rho capital R and fraction start fraction partial p over partial phi and fraction for the phi coordinate.